Hi guys, today we are receiving Ricky of Icon. Welcome, Ricky. Hey, Julian, good to be here. So Ricky, can you introduce yourself? Sure, so uh, my name is Ricky Dodds. I uh, work for the Icon project, which is one of the uh, largest uh, blockchain projects out of Korea. Um, it was uh, founded in 2017 um, as an interoperability project. Um, and it really seeks to sort of uh, bridge the divide between sort of private blockchains and public blockchains, but also uh, interoperability between uh, sort of public and public blockchains. So, um, you know, we've made a lot of progress since 2017 and happy to sort of talk that uh, through that with you today. And sort of a little bit of background about myself. Um, uh, I work uh, with one of the founders of the team, uh, Min Kim, uh, very closely in the US. Um, we try to do a lot of business development sort of strategy initiatives uh, over here stateside. Um, and sort of my background, uh, getting into blockchain, I worked um, at Deutsche Bank for about eight years um, in investment banking, equity research, following uh, the financial institutions and really sort of got down uh, the blockchain rabbit hole in you know, early 2017, sort of right before, you know, it started to hit uh, sort of headlines and uh, haven't looked back since. And uh, I've been with the project now for about three years and, um, you know, we got a lot of exciting things in the pipeline. Mm, it's interesting you mentioned you have a background in finance because I do as well. I feel like for a lot of us, it's really natural. Uh, yeah, like from finance to, to blockchain. And so you for Icon, the, what I understand is that this is a inter-blockchain solution. Can you explain a little bit how it works? How is it going to connect all this blockchain? Yeah, so maybe I'll give you a sort of a, a landscape overview of you know what's out there and sort of how Icon maybe differ slightly. So, you know, you, you hear about these like interoperability protocols, uh, you know, Polkadot comes to mind, Cosmos comes to mind, Icon is obviously there as well. And, but we all sort of take different approaches to the way we want to sort of solve interoperability. I would say Polkadot has more of like a ETH uh, sort of 2.0 uh, sort of relay uh, chain and sort of parachain model uh, where it has like, uh, you know, uh, shared security with the relay chain um, with a number of sort of parachains that uh, sort of fight to sort of be in that slot. Um, whereas, you know, uh, Cosmos has this sort of like hub and spoke model where, um, you know, the Cosmos hub is sort of the governance and sort of staking model, um, but doesn't have, you know, much else yet uh, on that uh, hub. And then they have a lot of like application specific blockchains that they hope to sort of interconnect with uh, their IBC protocol, which I think, you know, just launched over the past couple of weeks. And then you have Icon, which I think is slightly different. So Icon has sort of all the bells and whistles that you would see on like a layer one uh, smart contract platform, um, you know, including, uh, you know, our interoperability solution, which we uh, call BTP, which would be uh, launching uh, alongside our new core blockchain um, in June or July of this year. So, um, you know, we, we kind of like built a layer one blockchain. We have like an applications running on it um, without uh, interoperability first, um, but now we're going to sort of flip the switch on that in June. Uh, whereas other sort of projects have sort of taken an approach where they're going to add maybe like smart contracts and like other sort of, you know, the bells and whistles uh, later on that line, but they've launched, you know, the IBC, for example, or Cosmos, uh, you know, prior to those things. So it's just sort of the timing and sort of approach, but, um, you know, I think uh, the ultimate goal is, you know, we all believe that, you know, composability and sort of interoperability are going to be like key themes over the remainder of the year. I mean, I think you're kind of already seeing a lot of these things uh, in practice with, uh, you know, uh, cer certain bridges being used for, you know, transferring assets from ETH to, you know, whatever chain, maybe Avalanche or Solana. Um, but a lot of these sort of solutions, um, you know, they're, they're not really, uh, I would say, like decentralized in the same way that, we hope to be, and I think like other, you know, uh, uh, projects hope to be as well. Um, and then you have like this other sort of basket of interoperability solutions with like wrapped assets. You have like wrapped BTC and you have uh, like uh, RIN, for example, like RIN BTC. So there's a lot of different players in this space. And I think, you know, Icon uh, will sort of carve out a niche um, within our own right, uh, given the fact that we have such a large community for our layer one uh, blockchain and then we'll be able to sort of weave in other communities as we uh, roll out our interoperability technology okay so i have a lot of questions um yeah. so 
first, how does it work with the, um, how do you call this, the, the shard chain? So like you have the, the main chain and then you have like the sort of secondary uh, blockchain. Uh, is it possible for anybody to create one of these uh, shard chain? And, um, and yeah, because for example, on Polkadot, it's possible to submit a proposal to create, a, um, how, how do they call this, a parachain with like specific parachain. parameters. So. Do you guys have a have a similar uh, me mechanism? Maybe you're gonna be like you're gonna have like a, a, a shard chain for DeFi, another one for for gaming, uh, that sort of thing. So we don't have that uh, yeah. sort of model. So yeah. I think ours sort of differs a bit from yeah. Polkadot with like the shards, and then Cosmos with like the basically Cosmos SDK. Um, we take a sort of different approach where um, you know we want to basically provide. Um, the ability to transfer assets and you know information uh, from those chains natively, um, instead of having like a sort of a mirrored image of those chains or you know any sort of like other sort of sharding uh, option uh, that those other chains provide. So our technology will utilize smart contracts that will reside on both the native chain icon and the uh, chain that will be uh, sort of bridging towards. Um, and with that, we're able to you know uh, seamlessly. Uh, transfer assets cross chain um, without having to, you know, have this sort of relay chain or, um, you know, uh, I guess, you know, a similar uh, architecture with regards to like the Cosmos SDK. Um, that's sort of how uh, IBC works. You have to sort of have a, a Cosmos SDK chain um, in order to utilize that service, at least in its current form. So ours is a little bit more uh, scalable in the fact that, you know, as long as uh, the blockchain supports uh, smart contracts, um, we can build our solution onto uh, that chain and allow it to interact with Icon. Okay, and in terms, so you mentioned you guys have a smart contract capabilities. Do you reuse any of the Ethereum technology? Because we see many other blockchain that uh, uses the EVM internally. Yeah, so that's something that I think we uh, didn't put enough effort into, like when we started the project um, on like, foreseeing the fact that, you know, composability is like one of the key aspects of, you know, Ethereum's growth and I think it's network effects. And you know, that's something that we are like um, definitely uh, considering now um, and have been over the past six months. And uh, we'll have some news on that very soon. Um, we will be uh, having a uh, EVM compatible um, option for uh, icon token holders and sort of the icon community. So we will be able to then leverage um, a lot of the things that have been built um, on the Ethereum uh, chain and uh, you know all, all the things that are going on in DeFi, we'll be able to leverage a lot of that um, activity and bring yeah. some of that activity over to icon. Yeah, that's great. I think this is a very smart move because when I see all the blockchain that create the, the custom smart contract solution, uh, I have a hard time believing in it because really right now the ecosystem is so much uh, based on, on Ethereum, like a lot of developers, a lot of tools, uh, no no Ethereum. So yeah, like if you do something custom, well, it's not possible, but uh, just a little bit harder. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And one of the things about Icon is, you know, Icon was like a bespoke custom built blockchain from the start. Um, and it kind of was born out of... Um, Ethereum, uh, I'm sorry, sorry, not Ethereum, but enterprise blockchain. So the, the founders uh, had many years of experience building sort of customized blockchain solutions for enterprise companies within Korea and even like government entities. Um, saw all the sort of uh, a blossoming uh, public blockchain industry and decided that, you know, this is where the world is going. Maybe it's going to take a while for these institutions to get some comfortability um, with sort of public blockchains, but this is sort of where the world we believe is going. Um, so, you know, with that, like given their sort of background, uh, they thought they could sort of build a better Ethereum. Um, but, you know, I think we sort of missed uh, the fact that we, you know, want to be compatible with Ethereum, given that they, they have like a strong sort of moat and I think uh, a lot of good like development teams and tooling. So that's something we're, we're building now and we're close to sort of launching that at this point. That's cool. And so one thing I was wondering was, uh, inter-blockchain solution is how they're going to work together. Because when we talk of blockchain, layer one blockchain, we always say that uh, there won't be any single blockchain, but there'll be a network of blockchain. But when it comes to inter-blockchain solution, is it going to be the same? Can you have like several IBS that sort of work together? I think so. I mean, I think 
it's it's kind of like it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out over like the next six to 12 months. I think that's where you're going to start to see like, you know, the winning solutions and maybe some ones that sort of don't win or uh, sort of lose share. Um, you know, I think you've seen with like Rin, for example, they've done like a good job of like integrating a lot of different uh, assets. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously like Rin BTC was a big hit during sort of the, the DeFi summer uh, last year. Um, so I think you're going to start to see, um, projects who have a solution that people want to, you know, adopt uh, mm-hmm. and start to gain market share. And I think you're going to start to see, you know, sort of winners and losers um, over the next sort of six to 12 months. That's why we think we're in a pretty good spot with what mm-hmm. we're offering. We hope to be one of the chains that has the most integrations by the end of the year. That's sort of an internal goal. And um, we'll see if we actually get there because um, you know, there's a lot of things moving, but um, that's, that's the goal. And, you know, to, to say that, like, you know, even if, uh, let's just say, you know, Ren doesn't uh, gain the market share that they sort of hope for. I still think that there is um, a need for, you know, these sorts of solutions, um, mm-hmm. you know, on an ongoing basis. I don't think that like anything just dies off because uh, it's not integrated. I think, mm-hmm. you know, there will be sort of customized solutions. And, you know, if if there's a community there um, for a blockchain, I think, you know, uh, other networks will want to connect with it. Um, we feel like we have a very strong community of users, developers, uh, uh, just participants in our ecosystem. So we think that, you know, as long as a blockchain has that, um, there will be sort of a value um, in connecting with those. As far as like uh, utilizing different technologies to do so, um, that's where I'm like also a little bit unclear is like, you know, how many different interoperability s- solutions can you connect to, you know, one particular blockchain? I mean, right now we have uh, a solution that allows us to bridge um, icon to Ethereum assets. Um, it's a third party solution. It's not our own technology, but that alone shows you that like there, there are projects that are willing to, you know, add in third party capabilities, um, despite having their own sort of native technology. So I think it's there. It's just, you know, uh, getting the right people involved and sort of, uh, you know, getting over the finish line. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if I were you guys, I would focus on the bridge between uh, Binance Smart Chain and Ethereum. This will work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think you know, we're gonna have some good announcements. I think uh, the community's gonna like it. I think you know, you see a lot. Of, you see where some of the economic activity is going on in the space. It's like you know, Polkadot, Binance Smart Chain, a little bit of Cosmos. So you know, those are sort of uh, some of the targets. And uh, you know, obviously, like Ethereum is out there as well. So yeah, I think we, we kind of have the. The same mm-hmm. rationale that you know that's where the activity is let's let's go and get it and uh, talking of activity do you guys have already some uh, users some dabs and if not w- when do you expect to see the uh, the first one yeah so we yeah so we have um a handful of dabs already sort of live mm-hmm. and on our network over uh the past couple of years you know a handful of uh you know sports apps a handful of sort of gaming gambling apps a handful of uh um, you know, other, uh, I would just call it like the other basket. Um, and then we have what's going to be coming up in the next couple of weeks are a couple of new DeFi apps, which I think will be sort of our own uh, sort of building blocks or Lego pieces for composability within the icon uh, ecosystem. Um, one is uh, called uh, Balanced, which is a uh, almost like a blend of, I would call it maker and synthetics um, and maybe a bit of mirror um, where you'll be able to uh, take out sort of a CDP and a uh, icon-based uh, stablecoin, um, and also sort of mint synthetic assets that you can trade or a margin or lever up on. So we got that project coming out um, in March, and then on the back of that, we'll have another project called um, Open Money Market, um, which is basically going to satisfy um, like the void that uh, like a compound or Aave fills in the Ethereum ecosystem. So being able to provide, um, you know, borrowing uh, and uh, lending facilities for these tokens that are already built on our network and then also utilizing our uh, interoperability technology, we'll be able to obviously onboard any asset um, throughout these other ecosystems that we'll be bridging to. So a couple of cool pieces that we think are going to be like foundational pieces um, for sort of our DeFi ecosystem, but also an ability to sort of uh, uh, bridge out to, to other assets as well or other ecosystems with those. And how can we follow all of this? Is there any website that tracks all the dApps on Icon? Yeah, I think 
so we're, we're like integrated with all of the sort of main uh, DAP aggregators. So like DAP.com, DAP Radar, those sorts of things. So if you want to check out ICON's activity, I think those are sort of the best places to look for up-to-date information on, you know, the activity that's going on on chain. Um, and then if you want to sort of get in a loop on what's going on with ICON, I would basically point you to our, our Telegram uh, room and maybe our uh, Twitter account. Give that a follow where okay, we keep I'll, you guys updated. Yeah, yeah I'll put this in, a, in there. Yeah. Um, That'd be great. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to ask you, is there any important uh, date or announcement that is coming this year for ICON? There's a lot. Um, oh. So, <laughs> so um, in March, as I mentioned, we're going to have a new DeFi project launching. Um, it's a fair launch project. So um, there's no pre-mine, uh, no sort of capital raised. Um, so, you know, early adopters will see sort of the, the benefits of being an early participant in these uh, ecosystems. Um, and then uh, right after that, as I mentioned, we'll have um, OMM, which is also a fair launch project um, and will be, uh, you know, uh, obviously beneficial for early adopters. So be sure to check that out. And then when we get into sort of the summer dates, we'll be launching ICON 2.0, which um, is our new Go based blockchain. Um, and we'll also be rolling out BTP, which is our interoperability technology. So, you know, those are sort of the technical pieces that I think are the most interesting. Um, and then on the business side, you know, we have very strong ties with uh, uh, Korea. Um, our team has been working uh, sort of very, very hard uh, to get them, you know, comfortable with uh, not only uh, sort of private blockchain, but you know, public blockchain. And we've seen some adoption of that. Um, over the past year, and we expect to see more and more of that as we move into the balance of uh, this year as well. So stay tuned. Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, thanks, Ricky. It was super interesting. Uh, I mean, I learned a ton of things. Like so far, I was just focused on uh, Cosmos Polkadot for, for the IBS solution, but now I feel like I've been missing out. So yeah, it's great to, to catch up. Yeah, thanks, Ricky. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye.